brought Germany 12 hours, 46 minutes. At 90 years old, sporting a moon crater tie, legendary astronaut James Lovell still beams when talking about outer space. This was built as an ICBM, so you're like the, the you know, you're like the warhead. Eight G's, and you're really past there, and you're hard and hard to breathe. Lovell reflects on his NASA career at the Adler Planetarium, which honors him with a Lifetime Achievement Award at this Saturday's Celestial Ball. He ventured to the final frontier four times, including aboard historic Apollo 8, uh, Apollo 8 Houston, which was the first manned moon orbit 50 years ago this December. That's what all of us wanted to do. That's what we were in the space program for, was to go to the moon. So to me, this was a real adventure. It was like a mini Lewis and Clark expedition. He came close to walking the lunar surface as commander of Apollo 13, but an explosion stopped that, leading to the infamous words portrayed in the 1995 Houston, movie uh, Apollo 13. Again, Houston, we have a problem. Turns out Lovell actually said, Houston, we've had a problem. Myth-busting and other intimate memorabilia fill Adler's Mission Moon galleries, thanks to Captain Lovell's generosity. They have to build the oxygen scrubber and they rip the cover off of the manual and turn it into a tent to make this oxygen scrubber. We have the manual with cover missing, a helmet and a glove. Anytime that you see these in other air and space museums, they're dingy and dusty and dirty and these are pristine white because Apollo 13 never landed on the moon. He even made it possible to display the Gemini 12 capsule he once flew in. Can you imagine two weeks in the spacecraft with Frank Warman? <laughs> All these years later, Lovell still rattles off detailed memories of his time floating in space, cracking jokes too. With six landings and uh, one mishap. <laughs> we didn't land on the moon, but we brought out the technology and the leadership and the teamwork of people working at something that was suddenly thrown upon them. Lovell quickly shares that his favorite exhibit contribution, a point of pride, is this photograph. On the shore of the Sea of Tranquility, so I named it Mount Maryland. Still recognized as being named for his wife and used to guide Apollo 11 to its historic moon landing. That's one small step for man, one for Lovell, the Adler is an ideal home for his memories, since he fell in love with the stars here as a young boy visiting family in Chicagoland. By myself, I'd come down here to see the museums and everything, and it was the Adler that I really enjoyed. Still the imaginative Boy Scout at heart, Lovell thinks it's worth exploring the moon again today, eager to see where space exploration goes next. Then that architecture, that infrastructure that we do to be comfortable going to the moon could be then expanded into a, a Martian trip. Captain Lovell's impact at the Adler Planetarium is clear from the moment you walk through the door, but beyond the artifacts he brought back to Earth, he leaves a legacy that continues to inspire. With that in mind, Adler's Vice President of Guest Experience, Sarah Cole, says the exhibits purposely explore Lovell's personal story as much as America's collective journey to the moon. When he first set out to want to become an astronaut, that didn't exist, that wasn't a job. Even if there's no path, I'm gonna figure it out, and yes, I can think this through. Always reaching to the skies above. Jesse Kirsch, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.